really must be the uh, coming inauguration, I think, as a nation. This is a time every four years when we look at our present, we look at our future, we look at our, our incredible past. And part of the American history, part of the story of this country, is a very sad story, the story of slavery. And it's a topic that's going to be tackled on uh, the next episode of your weekly constitutional radio program hosted by this guy, Stuart Harris, professor of law at uh, Lincoln Memorial University, the Duncan School of Law, mm -hmm. and also uh, the weekly, uh, your weekly constitutional host. Good to have you here. Thank you for having me, John. You know, we've heard of the Trail of Tears, right. which involved Native Americans. Right. Tragic. Right. We've heard of the slave trade, mm -hmm. uh, transatlantic, right. horrific. You're going to be talking about the slave trail of tears. What is that? Right. I can't take credit for that particular phrase. It was uh, written by Edward Ball, who's the author of a number of very interesting books, starting with one called Slaves in the Family back in the 1990s, when he documented his own family's history as a slave-owning family. Uh, Edward Ball has come back to this topic, and he is addressing the question of what happened when the slave ships arrived in Charleston or when the slave ships arrived in some other port on the East Coast and those slaves were sold. I mean, they weren't all enslaved and kept right there in those port cities. The markets were inland. Mm -hmm. And indeed, the state of Virginia, where many of the slaves came in, had an oversupply of slaves mm -hmm. because slaves, as horrible as it is to describe them as property, were property that reproduced, right? And so slaves had been in Virginia for hundreds of years, and the slave population there was large enough so that there was not a lot of local demand. The big demand was in what we call the Deep South, over in Alabama, over in Mississippi, where the cotton plantations were, and the bottomland and all that. So you had to get these slaves from Richmond all the way over to this area. How'd you get them there? You chained them together, and they walked. Mm. And they walked right past us. By us, you mean Johnson City through the Tri Cities through, through Abingdon, through Abingdon, through Johnson City, through Knoxville, where they diverged. Some of them actually went north to the Ohio River and then floated down the Mississippi. Others continued on uh, and went down a, a road that was built primarily for the slave trade called the Natchez Trace mm -hmm. in Tennessee, and then they went down to Mississippi and Alabama. and And it's a story of this very compelling sight that people it was very common in this area of just seeing groups of 50 and 100 and 150 black people chained together, men, women, and children trudging down the roads. Mm. Just a tragic story. And you know, you would say, well, you need to, you tackled this topic, you talked to this author, why? Why do you feel like this was something that needed to be out there? It's a painful issue, it's an issue that many of us don't like to think about, but believe me, Josh, it was the great constitutional issue of the first half of our national existence. Mm -hmm. It was the biggest single issue that was papered over at the Constitutional Convention. People knew it was wrong, but it was so important to the Southern economy that no compromise was, uh, well, they had to compromise on its continued existence. It wasn't possible to abolish it politically at that point. But for the first four score and seven years of our existence, uh, that was the issue. And it was only resolved in the great constitutional case of Grant versus Lee. <laughs> and what an impact that had. And what an impact that had. So right. we have to study it. We have to acknowledge it. We have to understand it. And the scholarship on it, it, it is developing every day. So there'll, there'll be more issues, more episodes like this. You know, growing up here, which is in the South, right. I was always, we always felt like slavery was not a big thing in this area because of just the, the agricultural but economy. But the trade was. But the trade it went was. right through, right. Fascinating. I'm looking forward to hearing more about this. Your weekly constitutional on WETS-FM is Sunday at 3. It re-airs again Tuesday at 8. What a great chance to be more informed. Stuart, thanks. Thank you, Josh.